Hello, loving humans. I want to try some eyeshadow that I have a little bit of experience with, and then some that I only have even less experience with. I'm just realizing sometimes there's air bubbles in these liquid eyeshadows or cream. I have used this Huda Amethyst Obsessions palette a few times. What's interesting is we've got the matte over here, these, this, this, and this. This one appears to be somewhat satin along with these two. I like these a lot. And then the three in the middle, I think they would count as duochrome. The interesting thing is it looks like this is the darkest middle and lightest, but this one actually comes off kind of even lighter than this one. And well, not lighter. I mean, the light one, I guess the middle one is more sheer is what I mean. It's still a medium pink. It's just, it's a lot like these goddess gloss. And I feel like I have to swatch every time pretty much. I also wanna try these L'Oreal Brilliant Eyes liquid shadow. I've tried them a little bit and I wanna try them on top of powder shadow because I think I'm gonna have a more fun time than when they're on their own. But the interesting thing is they're different from each other. This one is more opaque and has finer particles. This one has larger particles yet again, like the Goddess Gloss in Angelic. So different aspects to try. Starting out with fresh brushes. I feel like one safe color would be this medium pink on a fluffy blending brush. Yes, seems like a good transition color. I've already prepped with some eyeshadow primer, even though I'm still new to the modern versions of that. I used to do my own thing with that. So I'm just tapping, I'm kind of doing that and then just tapping it in slightly. And then I will blend at some point after. Want to build some up on the outside. Get rid of these little, whatever you call it, where it doesn't go into the skin evenly. I want to try a little bit of this one up here, which is a bit darker. I kind of want, I think I will use this brush in case it's darker than I realize. Yeah, I would say it's a little bit darker. It's funny, people will talk about the outer V. Sometimes it feels like a circle to me. Like you, you know, you can put it almost like an eyeliner a little bit and it ends up in a V, but one way to get the middle of the V kind of secured is to make little wiggly circles. Mmm. Now, I think I'm gonna use this brush next, kind of medium fluffy. And I wanna try this pinky satin purple, kind of on the lid towards the V. I think I might just go ahead and saturate the lid and then put the lighter purple over it and see how that goes. Yes, I'm liking this. And this is getting a little bit of that, I don't know if you call it, this counts as hard pan, but definitely seeming kind of shiny as if it's been pressed down. I mean, these colors kind of look like they're all the same at this point. Definitely looks like very bright pink which is kind of, well, I like the purple pink. So I guess I could try going back in with this brush and going to that darker purple that's like right next to the bright pink. I don't know how much of a difference it's gonna make, but we can try it. Yeah, I think it's making some. Kind of wanna try that underneath as well. I don't want it to go too dark too, dark too fast. So maybe I 
not a fluffy brush or do I want? I think I might try this brush and pinch it. I think I'm gonna try this color, even though it's kind of on the light side. It's, it's it kind of picks up in a weird way. Oh, wow, that's different. It is definitely on the chunkier side. I just don't want it too, too dark purple underneath, but we may have to go in that direction. I think I will start with this pink, just because I don't want that super bright purple. And I think I've got enough of that purple still on this brush. But again, can't have too, too much contrast. Mm, coming together. But we need to blend. I think I will use this duochrome as well, especially in this outer portion. It's definitely kind of intense, more so than the other times I've used it. Now, I don't remember. I mean, it's obviously sticking, sticking to the bottom as well, too, but I'm thinking that this primer, I put it on a lot more thickly than uh, recent attempts. So I think that's showing. And I've changed my camera settings a bit. So this time, instead of it being brighter on camera, I would say it's a little bit lighter on camera than it is in real life, which, which makes sense because that's kind of how things are on the stage and screen a lot of the time. So going back into this brush, the lightest duochrome, kind of over the whole bottom part. Although I'm really picking it up on the bottom there, it would be better if I had it on the tip of the bristles. But by doing this, I feel like that's diffusing it out. I'm gonna go in with the fingers and do the inner corner and up somewhat because we're going to be adding to this, but let's get kind of a base down. How am I liking this so much more than other times? I feel like this is kind of down too much. <clears throat> it would be kind of better to be lifted. Not sure how much that's going to work. I may have to accept looking a little bit tired today. And learn for the future. Not entirely sure how this is going to work, but I'm going in with that dark purple and I kind of just want to bring it a bit towards I think that's helping the eyebrow I mean it feels like too much but I think what I have to remember is something about the way I'm put together it sometimes seems like slightly different rules apply like the way the angles that I go and the space that I have is just a wee bit different. It just seems like the way that people do makeup, it doesn't always work as well for me. That feels much more lifted. And then the way I do it isn't always gonna work for other people. So now I wanna take that middle duochrome and see about just using that to kind of blend everything. Just kind of tapping it in, it's definitely chunky. And it's interesting. Definitely some flickage past the primer portion. But this is giving some good color grip, more so than the other day. I don't know if it's because I put more of this on. I mean, what I don't understand is when you put a little bit of this on your finger, it looks like only a tiny amount comes out. So I think I did about three, then I did this, then I did this, and then I let it dry for a while. But there really is not much that comes off this little doe foot. It's like it, I don't know if it just doesn't stick to it. When I when I go onto the back, like you can't even see it. You have to, it almost seems like just this tip allows it. So considering there's gonna be concealer or foundation underneath already, I think it works better to put it on the fingers first. So part of me wants to try this, but I've already tried that somewhat. I can always use it as an eyeliner. I wanna get into this. Question is, am I gonna put it on those fingers? 
I think I need to pick a brush first because it dries quickly and it dries down. I think this could be a good brush and a good time to do this. Oh, not even that much color on there. So this makes sense, I think, for here to here. But do I want to put, I mean, I can do the fingers for this. And I've tried already mixing some of this with the actual shadows, but I think it's gonna be interesting. So let's try this first. I kind of want to just, the thing is it comes out darker than you'd think. So I can always add more. It's definitely lightening things a bit. And it makes more sense to use it, I think, in conjunction with others than on its own. I've tried it on its own and it just looks a little, maybe incomplete, like, like I'm trying to just be quick and get out the door, which it can work for that, but I think there can be benefits to using it kind of as a topper, especially this one I hear, the string of pearls. So I'm seeing some glowiness that I like, kind of reminds me of this one. Let's continue. I wanna put some in the middle and Oops, I got it I have on the eyelashes. And you know, putting it next to these bright pinks and purples, I would say it doesn't look nearly as lavender as it does on its own. I think it's amethyst something I'll look in a minute. So I think it makes more sense to drag it in rather than start it in and drag it out. So just kind of starting in the middle, like letting the heaviest part be in the middle and then dragging it both in and out. Because the inner corner, we don't want that kind of getting glopped up with too much. I think that's where you get that creasing that's uncomfortable. And I think kind of putting this over the crease, I mean, over the outer V is lightening it up a bit. I feel like it is making it a little bit more subtle. I can, I can feel it in my eyes and thinking I should let them stay closed. And how much of a delineation mark or demarcation line is there between this and the next part? It's kind of hard to tell. But I like the shimmer that this is giving on top. I guess I've used it previously more. What is this one again? The amethyst quartz. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a topaz lavender. Where is it? Here. I don't know if it's gonna focus, but definitely shiny. And so giving something to that eyelid. So now let us try this. If I just dot it on, how's that gonna work? Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Hey, that could be a look. But before it dries, kind of wanna get this tapped in a bit. Although it's, I took a pause and now it's a little, you can kind of see the dots, which I kind of don't know if I mind. I mean, it's kind of fun. I mean, the first time I did put them on in a more distinct way, this one was just more tapping it on. I guess I can drag a little bit without messing things up too much. How's that? Uh, it's not the most perfect blending, but it's not too bad. I wonder if I go back in with this, if that will help anything. Because it seems like once it dries, it doesn't want to move. I have to inspect this more closely, but I think I like it. Now, do I want, I think I do want to try this on the lid as well. Hmm. 
Mm, quite pretty. It's almost like it's taking whatever color I have underneath and making it the kind of metallic that I want with the kind of sparkles I want, but without being glittery. I'm trying to figure out if I could, how much of this I could wear in a more conservative environment. For the most part, I like this. It's interesting to have the kind of glitteriness both above and below. Now the question is eyeliner. <clears throat> I think it's already dark enough to not necessarily use this. I think, you know, I haven't used this in a while, but I also wanna try that tart one that I was using today. And then I kind of wanna use well, no, I already have lavender on there. And I don't think I'm gonna need to put this over it because it's already quite, it's quite a bit like this. I'll have to compare those separately, but that burgundy that I had issues with the other day, maybe we can try it again, hopefully. And then if it needs to be lightened, can put other things over it. So I wanna be lifted here. So I, mm. Go up toward the eyebrow. That seems even. Oh, did I just, yeah, I just pressed it on here. I do have these magnetic lashes I want to try, but I don't know if today's the day. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just doing videos for myself, not presenting live. I think that's even. Yeah, pretty good. It's funny because other, you know, like when I close it, it looks like a pretty big wing. When it's open, not so much. I would say this liner is working better today than the other day. Could it be because it's over so much eyeliner already? Not sure. Because it's been used, I don't know. Shaking part, I don't know. Do I want to add anything else? I could add this, but I don't want my eyelids to feel too heavy. Maybe if I'm going to add something, perhaps I add one of these on a small brush or I just seem to use this one all the time. I think I will use that darkest one up here because I don't know how much use I'll get of it, out of it otherwise. And especially because with the big brushes you take it out of the middle, I'm gonna tap the corner to try to let that get even. Okay, so that is sticking to it. And it almost, I find is blending back into the eye and it's definitely flaking all over the place, but at least, I don't know, it seems to smoke it out a little bit. But the lid, I would say, yeah, it's a little lacquered on it with that liquid. How are we doing? Could use some more of the light inside. This is probably a time to try here. I think that's cute, but it's gotta be blended. Ooh. Is that even better than the last time I did that? Huh, oops, I got some on my nose. Hard to tell, but I think I like it. It just feels like, I think it looks better with the good lighting. Yeah. I want to test more of this goddess gloss to see how compatible it is with the longer lipstick. So hopefully this will stay put together. Mm, yeah, that did improve it. 
So that has kind of like similar sparkles to this. And is that transferring or is that something else? I think it's okay. I think we've got the shadow and the shading. And we've got blush, lipstick. Probably time for mascara. Sometimes it almost feels like, wait, that was too easy. Even though it took a little while. I've seen people do eyelash curling different ways. Like some people like to do it more than once in the same eye. Some people seem to tilt it. I don't know if that makes much of a difference though. Some people seem to be very particular about it. I'm usually kind of in a hurry and I'm just like, let's get this show on the road. Not a full hurry, but like more of a hurry than when I'm filming, when I'm really just trying things. I am enjoying the amethyst palette. Like it's definitely pinky, but it works. And then this is that rehydrated sample that right out of the gate had been oddly dry. I wonder if anybody does not get mascara on the bottom lashes while doing the top, and if nobody ever gets it on that inner part of the lid, or not the inner part, but the waterline. I mean, can you even get the roots without doing that? And then wanna give some extra oomph to the outside. I never was big on putting multiple coats on, but after watching Allie enough times, you know, she's pretty well known for her eyelashes, doesn't even use eyeliner very much and doesn't even seem to need to curl them. Because I guess when she curls them, just watching the other day that she said, it actually will go back into her lid basically. And so sometimes she'll just, after she's done, just hold it up with her finger. And I've done that too. And that'll give it a little bit of a curl. And mine are pretty long. Hers may be longer. I know she likes a lot of volume. And I also think there's enough on this mascara one that I don't need to re-dip and swirl around. Somehow I feel like my eyelashes look shorter today. Maybe, is it the double curl? I don't know. A lot of the time I feel like that curl is just gonna come right out anyhow. I'm also trying to remember which setting spray I used to rehydrate. I think it was the Believe one. I kinda wanna try the Milani. Oh no, 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 I think I used the Flower Beauty. I think, do I still have that nearby? Cause it kinda feels like it could use some more. And there's just naturally some on the bottom. No, sometimes the bottom gets a little connected with the top ones. Yeah, this does feel dried out. Oh, here it is. I think this is the one I used. So, time for some more hydration. I guess it's had time to soak in. Not all of it's making it in there. Sure does smell nice. Just wanna wipe this off. And then put the wand back in. Scrape it around a few times. I mean, I assume it'll soak in kind of like a sponge. I don't wanna do this so hard that the stick part breaks off, but I don't wanna pump it too many times. I don't wanna make it too thin, but I feel like it's the Maybelline soup, you know, that one that's like so traditional, the pink and green. They, I have always found them to be very thin and like, not necessarily thin, but just very extra moist. And I don't know that that's the ideal, but that, that has won awards. So why is this so dried out comparatively? And how are we doing with mascara? Yeah, I kind of want to hold this up here to see if that's going to do anything. Like, I don't know how, if this will do anything after it's dried a bit or you know how if you do this a couple times during the day will it 
reset them slightly. You don't want to get on your fingers either. And I sometimes wonder, is this going to take out clumps or what? That does give it some lift. And I'm not seeing much transfer. So I think we're pretty close to done. And can get ready for the next meeting. I'm liking it. I love purple. It's kind of, I think it's the best for green eyes. It kind of makes them show up the most. And I'm liking the glitter. Kind of want to take up some close up photos. So I guess that's it for now. And thank you for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. And peace be with you.